The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is End Time Headlines, and this is Ricky Scaparo. And we want to welcome everybody to the broadcast today. If this is your first time joining us here via by Facebook, uh, I want to encourage you to uh, below under the comment section, please uh, comment and let us know if this is your first time. Uh, just simply type in there that you're new or first time uh, or whatever you'd like to do so that we can acknowledge that. Um, and again, we welcome our podcast audience. We welcome our U- or YouTube audience. Yes, uh, we welcome you guys as well. Uh, it is approximately 4.12 p.m. Eastern uh, here in my neck of the woods, and it is Wednesday, March 25th. And today, I want to give you, we're going to give you an update on the latest developments with uh, with this pandemic. Uh, so our whole, this, this whole segment is going to be covered today. We got a lot to cover today, um, a, a lot to talk about. I hope everybody's doing good. I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope uh, that you're keeping your family safe and you are doing what you need to do to keep everybody healthy uh, and out of harm's way. So let's get started on this thing. I'm going to pull up, uh, I pulled up this, uh, there's different graphs that I pull up and you can find several of these. Uh, They're all, all kinds of these are out there. But right now, as of, again, 4.13 p.m. Eastern today on this March 25th, on this Wednesday, we are at right at 908 deaths, 908. So we are edging towards that 1,000 deaths uh, marker. Uh, We have 64,563 confirmed cases And the United States of America and and, and 393 recoveries. So I'm going to say that again, 64,563 confirmed cases in the U.S., only 393 recoveries. Now, um, there's no way that we can tell you how many people are hospitalized and how many that are staying home that are sick have tested positive that are staying home, they're quarantined. But again, 64,563 confirmed, 393 recoveries, and 908 deaths. Uh, I suspect that by this time tomorrow, we are going to cross that threshold. Uh, and, and, and that's very sad and that's very tragic. So I want to give you up to date. We got a lot to cover on this, guys. Doctors and nurses, according to report are now scared to even come to work to treat patients because of supply shortages. And I I watched uh, several news outlets, and they all reported this. Uh, Many of these nurses and medical staff, uh, they would go, they would not disclose their identities for fearing that they would be fired or they would lose their job. And many of them, they, uh, they changed their voice. Uh, They were off camera. They didn't show their physical appearance, but they all was basically uh, the the general consensus here is that throughout, not all, um, I know, you know, I know many places where some nurses work and they don't have a shortage of equipment, but in the big cities, New York, California, Boston, uh, places like that, New Jersey, um, for the first time, Doctors and nurses are saying that, quote, they are scared to even go to work with a shortage of PPE or personal protective equipment. Uh, Even the U.S. Surgeon General, Dr. Jerome Adams, came out uh, and and talked about how the government needs to control, or they're in dire need, rather, of medical supplies, masks, gloves, surgical gowns from the national stockpile that hospitals need. Um, so from what I gathered, President Trump has now said that they're going to be sending these supplies and more of them as it comes. Uh, this thing is, and not just the United States of America, but it's spreading outside. And again, I'm going over some of these headlines. Uh, panic is ensuing in, in part across Africa. Uh, a report came out that we reported on 
Uh, cases of COVID-19 have now been recorded in more than two dozen African countries and South Africa imposing a three-week lockdown, which will come into force tomorrow. And a German epidemiologist fears that the disease will strike the continent hard in the summer. Hmm. Makes you wonder, because uh, there's a, I've heard many theories that this thing doesn't like warm weather, but yet here's an epidemiologist is fearing that when the summer comes, that this thing will even be even more dire. And we know places like Australia and India and different places like that. It's very warm right now, and they're still seeing the spread of this. So I'm not really, I'm not one to buy the notion of the, well, just because it's going to come summer that this thing is going to die off. This is not the flu. That's the problem. So many people are comparing this to the flu, and this is not the, this thing is, this virus, guys, is so mysterious. I mean, you've got, um, you can line 12 people up and you'll get all kinds of different uh, symptoms, uh, different responses. Let me just give you some of this. Uh, pink eye could now be an early symptom. Itching and red eyes could be a possible symptom. Uh, losing the loss of sense and smell is a possible symptom. Almost half of these patients experience some type of digestive disorder. So guys, again, you've got digestive disorders, you've got itchy and red eyes, you've got uh, pink eye uh, uh, symptoms that occur i mean it's like for all of you guys that live like me in the southern part of the united states you just described our annual or seasonal allergy symptoms i mean i wake up if i don't take uh, i take allegra about every day in the spring and summer and if i don't take it i've got the itchy red eyes i've got the 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 dry cough and the uh the the these other symptoms that you talk about this so this is why this thing is so mysterious. You've got, for the first time, the first U.S. child to die from this virus was diagnosed after death and didn't even meet the test criteria. There was a 42-year-old nurse that was found dead in her home in Georgia that had no pre-existing conditions and was found dead in her living room with her four-year-old child beside her. There was a 42 years old. There was a 39-year-old health worker in Louisiana found dead in her home after exhibiting symptoms and waiting for her test results. Her boyfriend came back and found her dead. Again, no pre-existing health conditions. There was a a 50 early 50s pastor um, out of Oklahoma who recently died and from from what everyone said he was in a fairly good health all right so it's a mystery because you've got you've got these type of situations that you're hearing but then you'll hear about you know this guy over here and this woman over here that they contract the disease uh, and they'll say, well, you know, we didn't even, we didn't even really contribute it to, uh, coronavirus. It was just, we had just had a scratchy throat. We had a little bit of a raspiness in our chest, but they never had a fever. They never had a cough. They never had, uh, pneumonia. And in fact, from what I read on this, over 80 to 85% of all these uh, people that are infected with this are walking around not even knowing that they have this disease because the symptoms are so mild that they scratch it off and that, no pun intended, but they mark it off as a better word I should say there, but they mark it off as a, well, it's just, it's allergies. It's just sinuses. It's just a little bit of a head cold. Guys, I could tell you, listen, I've got people in my own family, and i got to be careful what I say here, 
But I've got people in my own family that they believe with all their hearts, and I'm not going to tell you where they're from or any of that stuff, uh, but they believe with all their heart that they actually had this all the way back in December before it was ever publicly known, before the spotlight was on it, before the World Health Organization jumped on it, before the CDC jumped on it, before China was in the spotlight, all the way back in December, they uh, they had all these serious symptoms. I'm talking about pneumonia-like symptoms, the cough, the dry cough, the, the weakness, the fatigue, uh, the fever. Um, but they marked it off as... The, the flu. But when they got tested for the flu, it came back negative. And it was only after time progressed and this thing came out and more information circulated and the spotlight was put on Wuhan and it was put on China. It was only then that they began to, uh, to wonder and they believe, they truly believe that they, they had this. And I'm not talking about, and, and I could name, I know at least a handful of people, uh, even in my, personally that I know of. And then I, I could go on social media and I could tell you all kinds of people just, just reading forums and blogs and on Facebook, on Twitter, and so many people in, back in December and January that was contracting these weird flu-like symptoms, respiratory symptoms, respiratory illnesses, that they couldn't figure out what it was. It was unlike anything that they ever had. It wasn't like the flu. It wasn't like the head cold. It wasn't bronchitis. It wasn't asthma. And they had all these symptoms. And they they got over it. Um, but again, they were they were sick for a while, but they got over it. They were not hospitalized. And again, from the general consensus of what we're gathering, this seems to be 80 to 85 percent of every individual that contracts this this is what it's this is about what we got and then we got that 20 percentile that he's either is uh that it's serious uh they go into hospitalization put it be put on a ventilator and then you get into the three percentile that ends in death all right so again this is it's again it's still uh it's still a mystery but nevertheless, this leading, this uh, epidemiologist has warned, has come out, this German epidemiologist has warned that if this, if this disease explodes in the continent of Africa, he says, quote, people will die in the streets. Because again, Africa is not equipped to handle this. Guys, you thought Italy was bad? You thought... Uh, China was bad. If this thing sweeps through the continent of Africa, it will be absolutely, it will be terrible. Um, and we pray that that's not the case. The governor of California is pleading for 50,000 additional hospital beds. He's looking, uh, a Gavin, or I'm sorry, Governor Newsom of California is looking to purchase some 200 million pieces of protective gear for doctors and nurses treating patients with COVID-19 there in California. Um, Louisiana's governor has recently come out stating statistically that his state has the fastest growing cases of coronavirus in the world. Um, and the governor recently came out and uh, implemented a stay-at-home order for 4.6 million residents in the state of Louisiana. Um, again, I'm, I'm just giving you some information, guys, as we're getting this. Um, then there's been the speculation of how long does this stuff last on surfaces? Uh, there was a previous analysis that came out and found that the virus remain viable on plastic and stainless steel for up to three days. Although the longer it stayed, the levels dramatically, uh, uh, it, it fell dramatically over time. It was less stable on copper, and there was no viable virus found after four hours, 
and cardboard, which was clean after 24 hours. But listen to this. A recent report came out, according to Bloomberg, that newly discovered uh, uh, discovery was a bit chilling, to say the least. According to a new report, traces of the coronavirus were found on surfaces in cruise ship cabins. You remember all those cruise ships that were quarantined and off bay and all this? They found on the surfaces of these cruise ships after people were taken off of the ships they found traces of coronavirus on cruise ship cabins as many as 17 days after passengers had left. Now, now before everybody freaks out, uh, the researchers also stated that it was not possible to determine whether or not they could actually cause infections or if it was potent enough to infect individuals. But nevertheless, they still found traces of the virus on the cruise ship cabins. 17, almost, guys, that's insane. That's a little bit over, that's almost three weeks after the virus uh, was laid on the surface. So that's, that's pretty uh, incredible, to say the least. Now, uh, President Trump has come out and made a statement that's got a lot of people stirred up. And let's, uh, we did a poll about this. We did a poll on End Time Headlines regarding this. And I asked the question, and we're going to get into this right now. This is what we're going to talk about right now. Do you believe... I'm going to ask you guys this. You guys on Facebook Live, many of you guys are chiming in right here. You guys on YouTube watching this. Let me get a drink of water real quick. Do you believe that we, because listen, this is the point, guys. We're getting to two choices. We're, we are left with two choices. This, let, me, let me read my Facebook, my personal Facebook uh, post that I wrote on the 19th of March on my personal page. I'm going to read this. And then I'm going to ask you guys a question, and then I want to hear your feedback on this. Here, this is what I posted on the 19th. So, again, almost a week ago. This is what I put. Quote, I believe humanity is going to be left with only two options in the coming weeks. And I was right. Within a week after I posted this, this is what it's coming down to. Either A, we collapse the entire economies of the world in efforts to save the 3% of the population. Now, before everybody gets mad at me and freaks out over this, just let me finish. Or B, we go on with life with the reality that 3% of the world's population will likely die from the disease. Now, again, this I said this a week ago because this is what it, it seems to be, and I just didn't fly off with this uh, off the top of my head, I weighed this out. I looked at past uh, epidemics, pandemics. I looked at the statistics of the flu, SARS, H1N1, uh, other coronaviruses, and the list goes on. The reality is we don't have any other options Unless the Lord supernaturally intervenes, which I pray that that happens. And we talked about that on our last segment. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their sins and wicked ways, then shall I hear from heaven and heal their land. That's the antidote. That's the cure. You, you and I know that from a spiritual stance. But I want to talk to your from the natural. Okay? We know spiritually... That if, if God's people will intervene and they will intercede and they will do exactly what the book says, then things will change. Things will turn around. But I want to, from a natural stance here, that's what I'm going to go with this. We're already in recession territory. Already in recession territory. In fact, um, let me pull this up. The largest bailout in history just took place. The law if the largest bailout in history just took place. Okay? So I got a lot of things pulled up here. Let me go back to this. All right. So we're already in recession territory. The fear is 
the longer that we stay shut down, the more probable it is that we will be plunged into a great depression. Now, keep all this in the back of your mind. If we can keep throwing money at this, but if we rem- if businesses remain shut down, America remains shut down, and it's not just America now, guys. We're talking about uh, we're talking about the world, nations of the world, and I'm and I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, and I put on here. Let's see. Let me pull this up. Have we? This is a question I asked. Have we ever been able to stop a virus like this in the past? Well, the answer is no. Did you know? Listen, the Zika virus is still here. West Nile is still among us. H1N1, it's still out there. Um, what out? What am? What am I missing? I mean, we, there are so many of these things. SARS, that's that's been out there. The West Nile virus, it's still out there. Did you know the bubonic plague is still out there? It still pops up in places like Colorado. There's different forms and strands of bird flu that comes from other nations outside of America. So let me let me say this again. Have we ever been able to stop a virus in the past? No. Did we stop the 1918 flu? No. It 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 burned itself out. It ran its course. By the way, it came through in the spring or in the in the fall slash spring. Then it slowed down in the summer. You listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying here. It came through and in the summer, it began to dissipate. And what happened was, and I pray to God we don't make this mistake. You listen to me. This is what I'm telling you. Epidemiologists fear this. The World Health Organization fear this. The Centers for Disease and Control fear this. Infectious, all, all of them fear this. That if this, if this COVID-19 begins to dissipate in the summer and begin to die off, what's going to happen is humanity will become relaxed. It will become lackadaisical complacent they will they will suddenly and you it it won't happen overnight and it won't happen in a week and it won't happen in two weeks but you let a month go by and you let two months go by and then all of a sudden people are not washing their hands like they should be they're not they're not practicing social distancing to the point where they should be They're living life as normal and they're going to do things. And then all of a sudden, this happened in 1918. And then when the winter came, this thing came in roaring like a freight train. And it was the second wave that actually caused more damage and more deaths than the first initial wave. And they're already fearing. They don't know. Again, I told you earlier in this podcast, they don't know the, the full nature and characteristics of this. That's why it's called a novel coronavirus because it's new and it's a mystery. They don't know. They're, they're praying and hoping that it does not take a second wave like the 1918 pandemic. But I'm telling you, again, let me get back to what I'm saying. We... We have learned to adapt and live with viruses in our society, with the sobering reality that just like all other viruses, there will be inevitable fatalities with it. If we continue in the path that we're in, our economy will completely collapse and civilization as we know it will end it's, I know this is a hard saying to hear this, but it's a reality no matter how we slice this thing. The bottom line is that, again, lest the Lord intervene. Now, it's interesting um, that President Trump has come out and he is being hopeful. He is being optimistic and wanting 
to open the valve on this thing. We've had the valve shut off of America for um, this. the end of this week will be the 15-day marker. What is that, Saturday, Sunday? And he's hoping... And he's come out publicly and said, "By he said he wants to see Easter Sunday. He wants to see churches across the nation packed with 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 the with congregants packed with people. What a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful scene that would be. And I agree, it would be wonderful. But is it reality? Um, whether you love the man, like the man, hate the man, guys, I." would hate to be in his shoes right now because no matter, let me, I'm going to say it again. No matter how you slice this thing, somebody's going to lose. Somebody's going to lose. So I want you to think about this second. Let me ask, I want to ask our viewing audience today, watching by Facebook live, listening by podcast, watching by YouTube. What do you think we should do? Now keep in mind America's, uh, now you got to keep all this in mind. China, let's just, let's just talk about this for a second. China, they closed the valve per se for, what is it, two months? They shut everything down for two months. Now they're opening this thing wide open. On the 25th, tomorrow, they're going to begin to open up again provinces that were completely shut down. They're going back to work. They're going back on the streets. And this is not some kind of conspiracy theory. You can, you, guys, you can go and look it up. This is not just coming from Chinese media. This is coming from the World Health Organization. It's confirmed this and other uh, international media outlets that are sending reporters over there and they're showing this. Uh, but again, I, I want you to think about this and let this soak in. Before you answer the question, China, which was the epicenter, it was ground zero for all this. It took them nearly 60 days. Everything shut down. And we're talking about draconian measures. I'm talking about there's footage out there showing the officials that were welding doors shut on people's homes so they wouldn't get out of the house. We're talking about they were throwing people by force into vans, throwing them into quarantines. There was a man from Australia who his girlfriend was a Chinese and she was there and he came and traveled out from Australia and he was there visiting and he was there with her and he didn't want to leave her there so he chose to, and from what I understand he's still there and he was talking about how he was in this apartment and the Chinese officials was coming they were knocking on doors all around him checking temperatures if you had a temperature they would take you by force and 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 they would re, uh, remove you from the apartment complex we were this is not happening in America. This is not happening in the United Kingdom. This is not happening in Italy. By the way, Italy's getting there. They shut down the whole nation and then then they stepped up their measures. Now, from what I understand, now they're not even letting people go out of their homes. Why are they doing that? Because they're bullies? No. Because they're trying to rule over the people? No. Because they understand, they're taking notes from where this thing started, ground zero. And now that we see 60 days later, China is now reopening. And everybody's so optimistic. Oh, bro. Now, I, I, again, I'm going to throw all this out there and then I'm going to ask you the question. Before you answer this, I want you to weigh out all this. We haven't even got to 15 days yet, and we're talking about open the valve on this thing. We're not even at 15 days yet. China was shut down for nearly two months. We're not even 15 days into this, and people are losing their minds. People are beating their kids. People are getting divorced. People are, are, are having been forced and quarantined by authorities. People are, are losing their minds. Throwing a, there was a man in Kentucky that threw a coronavirus party. And he got people infected. You got spring breakers flooding the beaches, uh, 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 neglecting, defying orders. California governor has just 
dispatched drones to to uh, to enforce these quarantine orders, just like China did. China did the same thing. They 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 used drones that had infrared lights, cameras, and they were see, they were spotting people. And you got people freaking out. Oh my gosh, brother, we're going into martial law. We're going into a national shutdown. Again, why do you think that's happening? We're not getting it. We're not grasping. The World Health Organization has warned people are not getting it. What just what was it? Yesterday, two days ago, a World Health Organization official came out and said that social distancing is not enough. He said that we this thing cannot be won by defense only. It's got to be won by offense as well. What is that? What does that even mean? What it, here? I'm gonna tell you what it means. It it means that we can't just listen. We can't just shut ourselves off, but we have to obey. What there's a reason why they're telling us to do these things. Yeah, exactly. Clarissa said there's people licking toilet bows. Did you know that there's these? These uh, these people are doing this challenge where they're they're licking toilet public toilet bowls to try to get Instagram followers. This is the society we live in. We got teenagers going into market stores and grocery markets and purposely coughing on produce. You got a guy that was walking through Walmart that was diagnosed with the coronavirus. He's walking through Walmart filming himself on YouTube talking about his symptoms and and saying how he's he doesn't care if he's supposed to be quarantined. I'm going to go out and do what I want to do. And we wonder why the the enforcing of this is the bottom line is guys if everybody would listen and obey there's a good chance that we could have this thing shut down sooner or come we could pull out of this thing sooner or later but that's just not happening it's just not happening you got churches there's a pastor in louisiana has over a thousand people in one service and he refused to shut the doors and they have warned him that you are endangering people's lives. And he's come out and said, I'm going to keep doing it. We're going to keep having church. He's busing people in from all over the, throughout the city of Louisiana to come over a thousand people. And we're, we're going to have church anyway. Then you had another, I'm not going to name names. You can find it on end time headlines, but we, there was another pastor out of Florida he said the same thing. We will not close our doors. And he was encouraging his congregation to go and shake everybody's hands and hug each other in defiance against the orders of the government. It's out there. You go look it up. So now President Trump has come out and he's trying to give optimism. And I get it to Americans because it's depressing. It is. I mean, my goodness. You know how... Uh, it was a vacation today. You want listen, I had a vacation today. You know what I did? I went out and mowed the yard. I went out and mowed the yard, checked the mail, put out the garbage, and we're going to go for a walk in our neighborhood. That is a vacation in the middle of this quarantine. The sun is out. You know how excited I am about the sun being out? It's the little things that make a difference and we take for granted. But Trump is trying to be optimistic and said, we want to re reopen the country for business in weeks and not months. And then he come out and he's pointing to a date around Easter. And I get it. Resurrection Sunday. It represents new life. And I don't want to get in the whole thing about Easter. Stop it. We're not going to get into that. And he went on to say, and this is where they, there was a lot of controversy about this. He said, quote, we can't have the cure be worse than the problem. Now, what does he mean by that? I'm going to tell you what he means. And he come out, and in case you're trying to think that I'm not interpreting, if I'm making my own self-interpretation of this, he actually came out and said this. Here's the bottom line. If we keep the valve shut, and we keep America closed. Now, we're not even talking about India, 1.3, 1.6 billion people that are, that are going on lockdown. 
We're not talking about that. We're not talking about all these other names. We're talking about America. He said, if we keep America locked down, the nation of America locked down, and this thing drags on, we will be thrusted into something far worse than a recession. We will go into another great depression. And friends, I'm going to tell you something. I, and, and, and I'm getting ready to ask the question. I haven't forgot. I'm just, I'm putting all this on the table before you answer this. I want you to weigh this out. A great depression, if you go back and study the Great Depression of 1929 all the way to what, 1933, so on and so forth. There was people committing suicide, people jumping out of windows, people taking their own lives. There was soup kitchens. People, there, people didn't have anything. They were burning money because it was worthless. It was toilet paper. It was useless. If we, if, if our economy collapses like that again, and that was in 1929, 1930, 1930, that was back then. Could you imagine, just think for just a moment, could you imagine what society, how would society today handle a situation like that? I'm telling you, friends, it would be catastrophic and the death toll, I believe my personal opinion, you can like it, you can dislike it. It don't really matter what you think about it because I'm going to say it anyway. But I believe I, this is what he's talking about, that we can't have the cure be worse than the problem. You would have, there would be crime like you would not believe, home invasions. There would be, and I thought about this, <clears throat> you guys that keep up with the prophetic, David Wilkerson, was a real prophet of God based out of New York City. That's where his church was. Before he died in 2011, he saw a vision in which he saw fires in the streets of America. He saw New York City in flames, rioting, looting, burning, and it's never been fulfilled yet. And guys, I can't help you want to know what I, when many times when I lay down at night and what I think about, these kind of things go over in my mind. Do you know how many dreams I've written down and visions that I've written down personally that I've had of, of, of tanks and military equipment and troops in the streets of America, checkpoints, closures, roadblocks, soldiers, in the streets. I mean, over the years I've had these, I've written them down, written them down, and I could read them, but I don't want to do that for sake of time. I could sit here and read all these, and I'm sure many of you guys have had these same dreams, same visions. But again, I can't help but to wonder. I, I text one of my prophetic friends the other day, and I said, I said, my Lord, I said, do you remember the, uh, I said, do you remember the, 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 the Wilkerson visions and the Wilkerson, uh, the, the, the vision, not the dreams, the Wilkerson vision. And he knew exactly what I was talking about. And he said, I have thought about this same thing. Cause guys, listen, if the well runs dry, and by the way, there was a report today. Let me pull this up. I told you we got a lot to cover on this segment. I want to pull this up. Uh, governments. Did you see this article today? This was on IntimeHeadlines.com, IntimeHeadlines.org. Governments are moving to secure domestic food supplies. In one country, which is one of the world's largest shippers of wheat flour, is has already banned exports of that product along with carrots, sugar, and potatoes. Vietnam has temporarily suspended new rice exports or new rice export contracts. Another location has stopped the flour of its, uh, the flow, I'm sorry, of its sunflower oil and other goods. Russia is reportedly leaving the door open to shipment bans and said it's assessing the situation on a week to week basis. Quote, the start of a wave of food nationalism that will further disrupt supply chains and trade flows seems to be taking place. And you know what's pushing it? Is all the crazy people rushing and flooding to the supermarkets and 
just ransacking everything. The meat department's empty. The bread department's empty. Milk is flying off the shelves. We're not even talking about the toilet paper and the hand sanitizer and the paper towels and the wipes. And We're talking about food and supplies and produce. So, again, I want to ask you a question. What's going to happen when the food supply dries up? What's going to happen? All right, so let me ask this question, then I'm going to go in further into this. I'm going to, I don't even know how long I'll be. I'm going to run out of time, guys. I don't want to keep you on here all day with this. Do you, do you believe that we should, do you believe we should open the country back up at Easter? Or do you believe we should remain closed and wait longer? So that's, that's my question today. I want to hear your feedback. We already asked this poll on In Time Headlines, but some of y'all may have missed that. So this is the question I want to ask you. Do you agree with the president? Keep this thing or open this valve up around Easter? Or do we keep it closed? Or do we keep the valve closed longer Maybe even long as China. By the way, the Pentagon officials came out today and they did an assessment on this. And again, these are Pentagon officials and said that they believe by their assessment that this thing could drag on for at least three months. It's, and some said even as long as into the summer, even in July. So you've got some conflicting things here. You've got health officials that are saying, leave the valve closed. Pentagon officials saying it's going to be, it's going to have to be much longer, but we've got Trump and I'm not bashing Trump guys. I'm not. I understand the optimism. I understand the hope, but he's saying we got to open it in, uh, around Easter. And again, guys, this is the reason why he's saying we got to open it because he understands the magnitude that if we leave this thing closed and we don't get on with love. Now you say, well, how could it could? And then he actually tweeted this morning. I read, I, I should have, if I thought about this, I'd pulled up the tweet, but I don't have time to pull that up. It would take too long to pull it up. But he tweeted this morning that we're, we're going to have to meet the middle ground. Basically, I'm paraphrasing this where if you are healthy, we can, we got to do something. Maybe put a mask on you, put some gloves on you and, and still implement social distancing, wash your hands and use all these measurements and put you back to work if you're sick remain at home remain quarantined until you get better and then we'll put you back to work but if you have pre-existing health conditions and you're elder if you're an elder uh, elderly individual then you still have to be quarantined remain quarantined until this thing blows over so this is what he's saying let me say that again. If you're healthy and strong, we put gloves on you. We put a mask on you. You use the proper social distancing, but we put you back to work. So we keep the machine going, but we still are implementing these social distancing measures and we're still taking care of the elderly and this and that. Will that work? I don't know. But I can tell you this. We're about to be faced with this uh, predicament. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting. San Francisco warns that the coronavirus surge is worse and is yet to come. Listen to this. California residents are fleeing the cities and they're going to the deserts and the mountains. Hmm. I think I read that somewhere in the New Testament where it talks about in the latter days. As we get closer to this thing wrapping up and the birth pangs of the Messiah are happening and we get into this thing real heavy, it talks about people fleeing from the cities and going into the mountains. Did you know that? That's in your Bible. So again, this is happening. Uh, there was New York residents that are now being faced with the, uh, with the predicament of do we stay in the city or do we leave? There's a lot of New Yorkers that are leaving New York and they're fleeing. Speaking of that, Governor Cuomo again came out and he just warned that the rate of increase of coronavirus cases in, New, in the state of New York has grown and the rate of new infection is doubling every three days. He went on to say that, quote, we're not slowing it, it's actually accelerating on its own. 
And again, he's come out and warned that they're going to need up to 140,000 hospital beds, 40,000 ICU beds with ventilators. All right, this comes within days of the World Health Organization warning that this is excel- the pandemic is accelerating across the world. Physical distancing measures are not enough to stop the spread. It, it, the, this official went on and said that we need to implement tactics such as isolation and caring for every confirmed case as well as tracing. I said tracing. Then we'll talk about that in a second. Tracing and quarantining all the patients. Now, why are we talking about tracing? There was an article today that came out uh, that talked about, let me just give you this uh The Washington Post came out with this today. I want to read this. Let me pull this up. Quote, if you have a smartphone, you probably you have probably been contributing to a massive coronavirus surveillance system. That is revealing where Americans have and have not been practicing social distancing. On Tuesday, a company called Unicast Uh, that collects and analyzes phone GPS location data, launched a, quote, social distancing scoreboard that grades county by county which residents are changing behavior at the urging of health officials. And they went on and they gave certain places a good grade and a failing grade. For example, uh, Wyoming got a F. And they knew, and they they were graded an F because again the residents of think about how chilling this is. The residents of Wyoming were given an F because they were tracked and they saw their movements and where they were going, where they were not going, where they staying home, and where they not. So again, isn't it interesting? When I read this article today, I thought about. I thought about China because, again, China has a social grading system. A social grading system that is is scoring its citizens based on whether or not they comply with the government or whether they don't comply. And there is repercussions whether you do or you don't. And we talked about that in past episodes. So how are they doing that? They have satellites in the sky. They're tracking their phones. They're tracking their social media. They're tracking all. Guys, listen, how do you think this whole mess started to begin with? Because when this thing broke out in China, totalitarian measures were implemented to shut down any rumors and gossip that was trying to come out of China. Howbeit the doctors, there was a handful of doctors in China that way before this thing became even an epidemic, they were warning that there was another SARS-like virus that was circulating through through different locations of China, China and they were absolutely silenced. The leading doctor of this thing was shut down by the government of China. He ended up dying, and now recently China has come out and, and issued an apology. So if and this thing had already exploded to the point where they couldn't contain it, and they had no choice but to contact the World Health Organization. So what am I talking about? We're talking about they were shut down off social media. Anything that was, they had to go, um, they had to go in, uh, off track and to communicate with each other through, uh, through other means of servers and stuff that wouldn't be tracked. And it, it, this is frightening, guys. This is where it's coming down to. All right. So again, then we have the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is calling for 250,000 volunteers They just saw one of their highest death tolls in the United Kingdom. A third, listen to this, a third, after India joined in, a third of the entire planet is now under full lockdown. A third of the globe. And now officials are warning that as a result of this, the entire 
global economy as at the brink of collapse. So this is not a joke, guys. This is not something that is... Now, in the midst of all this, I got two more things I want to talk about, and then we're going to close this segment today. Again, I told you in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, in the strong birth pangs of the Messiah, he said that there will be wars and rumors of war, nation and arise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes. Luke said there'll be great earthquakes in various places. Then there'll be famines and pestilences. All that is right there together. So we again, I talked about this in one of our last segments. We've we've got the pestilence going. We're, we're about to see famine, and not just because of the locusts, but because of we could possibly see be seeing food shortages come real quick. Famine, P- pestilence, famines. We had rumors of wars at the beginning of the year with Iran and America and other nations that were involved, Turkey, Iraq, and now we and we talked about earthquakes last night. A huge 7.8, initially 7.8, the USGS came back and it uh, it lowered, they refigured it, they lowered it, the, the, uh, the measurement of this earthquake from a 7.8 to a 7.5, some say 7.6, but nevertheless a 7.5 earthquake struck off the coast of Russia, issued a tsunami watch for Hawaii. Thank God that they never got a, a tsunami from that. Then, uh, remember last week, there was a magnitude 5.6 6 rare earthquake that struck in Utah. And since and, and that earthquake was so strong that it, ra- it rattled people all through the residence. It caused structural damage. There was some power outages there. It was the strongest earthquake they saw there for many years. And there's, there's been ongoing hundreds of aftershocks that is still continuing to ripple through Utah. The strongest was, uh, one of the strongest was a 3.2 that struck yesterday at 5.42 a.m. So we got these earthquakes in various places. We got famines. We got pestilence. We got all these things happening. This, th- this stuff is picking up pace, guys. Picking up pace on unprecedented levels. Let me give you some other, um, I want to, I'm just reading some of these headlines, guys. I want to make sure we cover everything here. Those who, a new report is indicating that those who intentionally spread the virus can be charged with terrorism. Here's another article. How the government can track social media posts to enforce quarantines. I mean, this thing, guys, is getting... I mean, everything is accelerating. So, again, you can find all these headlines and many more like this from our main website. Again, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. I know typically on Wednesdays we come on here, we do a devotional and a prayer segment, but we've kind of changed things up this week. I'm going to try to get back on here either tomorrow or Friday, and we'll do we'll do a devotional and we'll do a prayer segment on that. But today was the information part of this podcast. All right? And then we'll do some encouragement and transformation, revelation. We'll do all that either tomorrow or Friday. But again, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. You guys on Facebook Live, you're going to see where it says support and follow. All that information there, all the links you can follow. Guys, don't rely just on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're, you, we've got our Apple app is now ready to go. Our our Android app is there. There's links there. You can click on that. You guys on podcast. Again, go to endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. You're going to find all that information there. You can follow us there. All the social media places you can follow us. Our main website. You can subscribe there to get our daily digest. You can get download our app. Subscribe to no, push notifications. All that is there for you guys to keep up with all of our news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. We don't want you just to rely on Facebook because there's a lot of weird and strange stuff going on with Facebook. Facebook's been removing uh, uh, pages just completely. One day they're here, the next day they're gone. So we, we don't want, again, in the event that one day Facebook is gone with end time headlines, it's gone off Facebook. We're still going to be going. 
We're still going to be ministering. We're still going to be doing what we're doing. Our main website will still be going. We're still going to be on Twitter. I've said it the other day. Twitter never bothers us. We're going to be on Twitter. We're going to be on Instagram as long as we can. Our main website will be going. Our apps are up. So you guys can have all that information and keep up with us. Our podcast will still be going. YouTube channel will still be going as long as we can. So again, we love you guys. We appreciate you following our ministry, supporting our ministry, partnering with our ministry. However the Lord puts on your heart, uh, we pray that you'll continue to do that so we love you uh stay safe may the lord bless you keep you may his countenance shine upon you i plead and profess the blood of jesus over you and your household and i declare psalm 91 over your family as well so uh until we see you guys either tomorrow or friday god bless you and we'll see you soon we hope that today's word was a source of blessing and encouragement to you and your family End Time Headlines is a ministry that provides weekly teachings to equip believers and inform the discerning of the signs and seasons in which we are in. If you would like to help support this ministry with a gift of any amount, you can do so electronically by visiting our website at endtimeheadlines.org, where you can sow a one-time gift or set up monthly partnership. If you would like to give by check or money order, you can do so by writing to End Time Headlines. P.O. Box 2312, Clarksville, Indiana, 47131. Thank you for your generous support and partnership to End Time Headlines. <laughs>